So Leonard, would you like to um, finish off by reading From Nearness? I will. Uh, this is From Nearness. Uh, as uh, Carol already uh, mentioned previously, uh, I'll start with a nature poem. There's a lot of nature poetry in Nearness. Um, this one is titled Southward. No need to ask what the sun dogs mean. The notes begin out of the wind frozen stream and snow running in a burst over the charcoal ruffle of the spruce grouse and the marmots quick look left and right. Leafless willows mark the way to the end of the sky's immensity to where what's below rises up. Sprouts from inside the earth, pools of black in the hoof print. Last year's grass splayed into fold lines of giving way to green. Light gathering shadows and the mist at the end of a watery meadow where the river begins. Where the alpha wolf stands astride the double line of the Yellowknife Highway, he will not move. But mountain silhouettes drift southward past evening, their gleams of caution stalking the night's distance from the Fraser Canyon to the Pacific, past fogs breathing the emptiness of new fields. A long way, and the stars know it. And the first light, the small leaf dawn, the song cool in the lungs. The yellow transparent apple tree, those of us who grew up in the Fraser Valley are undoubtedly familiar with the transparent apple tree. A tree stands under a patch of sky that overlooks our lives. Unlike the eternal orchards of the Louvre, their apples hand shaped perfectly by dream sparks in the garden's green, smooth as Eve's full breasts. The summer I learned to read, father photographed our apple tree twice as tall as I in my sailor suit. You can't see the sheen of the oozing fracture at the first branch, but you can see the bowl's thinness and the small shade on the boy's bare feet before he steps out of the picture to go inside the blue and white house. To open the case of a quarter size violin on his father's bottom shelf and practice open strings and simple scales. The old newspaper lining the shelf distracting him, headline leading, bleeding black, and a havoc of smaller words, some of them are real to him. Six hundred sailors lost, above a ship darkened by water. The boy sees a hull cut into equal halves, and sailors rising like apples, the surface gathering them three and four at a time, the way he held the spindly tree's first year apples against his chest, carried them up the steps onto the porch, laid them out on the table until there were no more. I'm walking with my son, a head taller than I, into evening, between sun and house past apple crescents drying on cotton white racks to where fragrance of ripe apples clings to the air. A slight touch of the boot against a large apple split full length, the flesh swollen white in the crush of shadow and grass, and all around a litter of golden apples bruised by small sharp moments of light. Uh, the second section of nearness is uh, uh, a, a titled can uh, Pacific Cantos and it's a canto sequence um, uh, consisting of nine, 19 cantos uh, in all. And I'll just read a few of them, conclude with them. 
Between the uh, capital three, between spats of rain, a hymn of sunlight on the surf, the clouds like Bellini angels on their own, the line we call horizon does not exist. Here the peacemakers can say more than usual desire, more than usual calm, and the patience of the Pacific plate, that deep down calculation which will never allow but all its ways be told. Canto four. Years ago, the smell of brown kelp, sweet taste of the eel grass, salt on your cheeks. And in the instant, you turned your back to your three-year-old son, a rogue wave, emptied lungs, the burn of sand under eyelids, legs straining against the pole. Why didn't you stop it? Every nerve of his hibrular body frantic with tremors despite the change of clothes. My clothes hurt. The wonderment. Learning to give more of himself to matter. Learning to give more of yourself to fear. Canto 17. Long Beach, other than the end of a continent, B&Bs, cheap motels, resorts with 24-hour desks. We are the measured sound drifting into dreams, the muffled tremolo of surf against shore, an innermost rhythm feeling the restlessness in which a shore defines itself and us asleep on its nearness, and awakening to countless sharp-billed yellow legs unicycling along the shore, stopping as one to face the tide, to watch, to listen, the Pacific still the messenger. Thank you so much for participating, for listening in. Now, if you want to unmute yourselves, please go ahead. If you have something you'd like to say to, to Leonard before we close it off. I know I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Leonard. I've fallen in love with your poetry. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Good to see you again, Leonard, and <laughs> it's almost like a family gathering here, frankly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi, Len. I'm sorry I got here late, but I really, I loved what I heard. Is that Jeff? Neil. No, this is Neil. Oh, Neil. Hi, Neil. Yeah, hi. Great stuff. I really loved hearing it. Neil. I'll write you soon. Neil and I go back a long way. He's a wonderful poet, <laughs> terrific poet, and he yeah. was a critic for me who uh, helped to uh, guide, uh, guide me in uh, my early efforts. And I want to, let's see, let me just read what, what I say. <laughs> in the dedication page on this volume. For Di Brandt, Marty Gervais, Neil Myers, mm -hmm. the voice you just heard, and David Zeroth, magnanimous companions who put me on the path and kept me there. <laughs> Len, it's so good to know that you're still there. <laughs> keep on, keep on trucking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lana and Mira. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lana. Thank you. That's fabulous. Yes, it was fabulous. Wonderful, wonderful reading, Len. Really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. It's great to be able to hear this. It's wonderful, Len. Good to hear your voice, Leonard. Good to hear your voice. 
All right, I think I'm going to, oh, I see Hildy Froze Thiessen was uh, listening in too, and Jeff Gundy, hi, both of you. Uh, hi, Len. I have not been uh, on video because it's been sort of complicated in my household here. It's the dinner hour in, in uh, Ohio. But, uh, uh, did you get the audio, Jeff? I did. I, oh, I can hear you fine. Yep. Good. All right. Uh, thanks. Well, it's the poem fun. that's important, Jeff. You know that as a poet. <laughs> uh, not it's the poem that's important, not the poet. <laughs> Yes, thanks very much. It's this is it's great to see you and hear you.